So you're on the verge of starting your brand new blog. You probably have your website all set up, a beautiful theme picked out, and a couple of other things in place. But what's missing is the actual content you need to publish. If you've never blogged before in your life, you don't really know what the process is or what to expect. And that's why I'm making this video. In it, I'm going to go over 10 easy steps to write and publish your first blog post that actually propels you further into your blogging journey. And it's not just another article. If you want to see more blogging tips, tutorials for beginners, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And if you're brand new here, hello, my name is Anna and I'm the blogging growth strategist behind the She Approach, a platform where I share blogging tips for beginners and advanced bloggers to help them increase their blog traffic and income and make their passion for blogging a profitable online business. But if you're just at the very beginning stages of your blog, all you care about is just launching your blog, getting it out there and having some content on the platform platform. So what do you even start with? Well, step one would obviously be to pick your niche because your articles obviously have to be in alignment with your overall niche or topic that you've chosen for the blog. I can talk about picking a niche and a topic for your blog for ages and I could make another video on it. But if you haven't already sat down and thought about what your blog is going to be about, who you're going to serve, and what are your main topics or categories are going to be, take the time to do so now because it's going to dictate what direction you're going to go in when it comes to publishing articles. Alternatively, if you need some help figuring that out now, I do have a free course on how to start a blog that goes in depth about how to pick a niche and one that's profitable and kind of aligns your passions and your knowledge with the potential for profit. I'll leave a link below if you want to enroll in that. And alternatively, I also published an entire book on this topic that's available on Amazon and the paperback version comes with worksheets at the end to help you figure that out and actually write it down if you prefer to think and write at the same time. So if you haven't already, complete step one and pick out a niche, figure out what you're going to blog about and then come back to this video and watch the rest. But if you already have that part figured out, you can move on to step two, which is skip the welcome post. A welcome post is something that I've previously done for my blogs and I've seen a lot of bloggers do the same mistake again, which is their first article is a welcome to my blog post where they kind of treat it like a diary entry. Have you ever started a new journal and you're like, well, I'm so excited to start writing in this one and this is what I'm going to write in here. Well, the truth is your readers don't care. They don't know who you are. They're not going to find your blog from that article. It's a waste of time and nobody's going to see it. I spent so much time crafting that first welcome post and wanting it to be perfect and inviting for my new readers. And I got like 20 views max over the years on it because nobody cared. And once I wrote it, it was dead and buried. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad thing to want to introduce yourself and the purpose of the blog to your audience, but there is a better place to do that. And that is your about page. That's going to be easily found and live on your blog. So if people are interested in knowing more about you, where you started the blog, what the vision for it is, and so on, you can spend that time crafting a better about page rather than putting it into an article or a blog post. If you've seen my other videos, I talk about it all the time. Diary blogging is dead. If you want to have a profitable blog that is also useful to other people, you need to make it less about you. And a welcome post is just all about you. So skip that step and start with an actual helpful and useful article that tells your readers what the standard of your content is going to be. And step number three would be to pick out that specific topic for your article. In other words, determine what you're going to write about in your first blog post that is specific enough to make it as a blog post on its own. Have a brainstorming session, write out a couple of ideas based on obviously your main niche and your categories that you're going to write about. So for example, when I started my side blog. I knew I wanted it to be a pet blog that talks about eco-friendly tips for owners and sustainable ownership. So a couple of my first articles were aimed specifically at that, which was a way to show my audience how my blog was going to stand out from other blogs in the pet niche. Alternatively, when I started the She Approach, a couple of my first blog posts were social media tips of social platforms that I was using for ages already or focusing on actual achievements I had and breaking those down, like how I made my first affiliate sale ever. You can definitely start small when it comes to these articles and just talk about topics that you were passionate about and knowledgeable about enough to start writing, even if you're not a writer per se. And of course, the more specific the article is, the easiest is going to be to rank for it in Google. For new bloggers, it's so hard to stand out if you write about very popular topics. So you want to go for the low hanging fruit and pick topics that you can easily rank for. If you want to have a proper brainstorming session with that in mind and learn how to find keywords that 
are easy to rank for in your specific niche. I do have a separate video where I talk all about it and tell you about my favorite tool. If you want to have a proper brainstorming session and figure out how to find out those blog topics or blog topic ideas, be sure to check out my other video on it. I will leave a link in the comment as well. Step four would be to research. So depending on the type of article that you're writing, you might need to do more or less research. If it's just a blog post about things you love and things you have already so much knowledge in, you might not need to do that much research. If it's something educational, if you're diving into the how to's or the steps or the very particular of a topic, you might want to do some extra research just to make sure that the information that you're providing is accurate and up to date. Everybody has a very different research process and even my process for my two blogs differ so much because they're two different niches. So that is something that you'll need to figure out and develop on your own. But a very important part of my research process is I want to make sure that my article answers questions. So in other words, if I'm writing about a particular dog breed for my pet blog or I'm writing about a particular social platform like Pinterest, I want to make sure that I include the questions that people have and the answers to them in the actual article. That is the key to writing educational content that actually helps people. So one of the tools that you can use to actually find out real questions that people have is Answer to Public. There are a couple of other online tools that serve the same purpose. Of course, you can also base this on your personal experience. So if you're writing about something that people often come to you and talk to you about, then you'll probably already have a very good idea of questions or struggles that people have around this topic. So start there. If not, use tools like also ask asked, go to Google and type in a couple of questions and see what other questions pop up. There's this little handy box called people also ask on Google. That's totally free to use. You type in a question, make sure to add the question mark at the end, and they will showcase a couple of questions related to that topic that people often ask. And if you click on them to expand them and minimize them after they will come up with even more questions. So you're not just scratching the surface, but actually looking in depth into this topic and how you can make a super useful article out of it. Additionally, you can use online forums like Quora. People often go there and ask very specific and personal questions. Then you can kind of take and customize and fit into the narrative of your blog post. Once your research is done, you want to move on to step number five, which is outlining your blog post. This is such an important step that I see bloggers skip all the time because they just start writing. They get so excited. They just start writing. I used to do this a lot, but when I started outlining my post, it helped me so much to narrow down the time that I was actually writing in because it helped me organize my ideas. So by the time that I sat down in front of my laptop ready to write, I wasn't wondering what my next point was going to be. I was following the specific outline. So for the outline, you want to start in a Google Doc or wherever you want to write your articles and organize your ideas in a way that flows and it makes narrative sense for people. Think about it a little bit like you did back in school where you had to have a structure for your essays, including an introduction, the points you're going to make, and then the conclusion and follow the same thing. Once you have your outline in place, you can move on to step number six, which is actually writing your post. So look at your outline, look at every note you had and start writing based on that. Aim for at least a thousand to a thousand and five hundred words. I find that this is a sweet spot for most blog posts, especially the educational or how to ones. Now, if the topic of your blog post doesn't require that much expanding on, don't force it and add fluff content just to meet that word count. But ideally, the sweet spots for good articles is around that 1000 to 1500 words. And I have articles on my blog that go up to 3000 words if they're kind of ultimate guides to. And for this step, you don't need to have your writing style all figured out. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a literary genius or anything. Just start writing. Find a way to make your ideas and findings come across in a way that makes sense for people. For new bloggers, sometimes it's even easier to kind of write how you speak and use a speech to text converter. Google Docs has a free one that you can use and I've used it in the past for projects and it's quite helpful, especially if you're stuck. So if you're worried about not being a great writer, you can use something like that or you could just start writing and don't worry about it being perfect. My writing has developed and changed and improved over the years 
a bunch, but you just need to get started. Not to mention that on step seven, where you can edit and revise your post, you can improve your first draft. So once you've written your post, you want to give everything a look over and make sure that everything makes sense and it reads well. You can use a tool like Grammarly for your spell checking and proofreading to make sure that everything is grammatically correct. In this step, I would also recommend getting rid of any redundant words or sentences that you might have added because that's how you speak, but you can condense it a little further in the blog post, making it easier for people to read. Once again, if it's hard for you to see how your writing comes across, you, you can use a text to speech app to hear it back to you. So there are a bunch of free ones that you can use. You can, you can pretty much copy and paste your whole article in there and hear it back. I've done this for a couple of dissertations and projects when I was at university where I was so stuck on a project and I had read it so many times over that I couldn't hear what sounded wrong where I was reading it, but but putting it into an app like that made me realize a couple of mistakes, a couple of things that just sounded wrong. And I was able to fix that just by hearing it. Again, in time, you will get better at this. So you won't need that many steps to get an article over. But, but for this first article, try the system and see what works for you and what helps. Once you have everything written, you can move to step eight, which is to find any additional content, graphics, and links you want to embed. Are there any photos or graphics that you can add to your article to help you make specific points? or just to break up really long paragraphs. Are there any links that you can add? For example, if you're promoting a specific product or brand or offering solutions of that nature, could you find useful links to provide in that article, whether they're links for official sources or just links to Amazon products that you found? Now, keep in mind that if you're looking to embed affiliate links, you usually need to have your blog already live and a couple of articles published to even be approved into these affiliate programs. And I have a couple of other videos on my YouTube channel that talk about affiliate marketing where you can look into that. But sometimes it's easier to just write these first few blog posts with normal links and publish them. And then when you get approved through those programs, you can go back and change these links. For any graphics that you want to add, I highly recommend using Canva or a really easy to use tool where you can find stock photos or you could just create graphics of your own that are unique. And speaking of stock photos, you will need at least one main image, which is called the featured image to display at the top of your blog post. These are quite important for a number of reasons. And if you don't take your own blog photography or you just haven't gotten around to it yet, you can use stock photos, which are royalty free photos that you can use online. I've actually just published another video that talks about the five places I personally go and find and take my online photos from. So feel free to check out the video and article I have on that for more resources on where to find blog photos. Coming up at step number nine is to format your blog post. So when you actually write the articles and format them and edit them and get them ready for publishing, I usually recommend using a tool like Google Docs or Word Docs or some online tool that automatically saves your progress and then moving it over to your blog platform. For me, that's WordPress. I love and highly recommend WordPress for bloggers. Once you moved it over, you might notice that it doesn't display exactly like you had it imagined or how it was showing in your editing software before. So this is the step where you need to format the blog post to your liking and actually preview it to see what it would look like on your blog or website. WordPress does have a preview format, so you can move everything over, preview it, and then make changes. This is the part where if you're brand new at learning WordPress, you might want to give yourself some time to play around with those settings and find out how it works. But once you have that figured out and all in place, you can move on to the final step, which is step number 10, publishing your blog post. Of course, you want to give everything a look over, preview it and see that everything looks the way you want it to, that your links are working and ideally opening in a new tab, all those little technical bits and bobs that you need to do before publishing it. There are also a couple of things that you need to check and include in the back end of WordPress before you publish an article. A couple of things that are on my checklist are to make sure that I have a featured image selected and in place and uploaded. You'll find that in the sidebar of your blog post draft. You also want to double check that you've used keywords wisely. So all those questions and content that you found in the research phase or in the keyword research phase, you want to make sure that you've included those in essential steps that you've given the blog post a really good title. Again, if you're new at writing blog post titles, I actually have an article on how to write headlines that stand out. 
then you want to make sure that you've included a meta description. You usually need to have a specific plugin to be able to do that. An SEO plugin, I use Yoast. And again, if you're brand new to WordPress, I do have a separate video on the 10 WordPress plugins that you need to have installed on your blog, ideally as a beginner. And then you want to take a look at your URL or slug. So if you don't know this already, the slug or URL is the part that shows up in your link for this article that will be permanent and you need to kind of get it right from the first try. And I usually just get rid of any stop words and keep the main keywords in there. Then of course you want to add your article to the proper categories, but you might've seen on a lot of the blogs that you visit that, that they have a handy way to categorize their content. So for my pet blog, for example, I split it into categories per pet, per breed, and even per type of content. Is it does it have to do with training or raising a puppy? All those are categories and subcategories that I've created ahead of time. And as I've developed my content base and that is it, you can hit publish and your article will be live for the world to see. And you're off to start your blogging empire. If you've learned something useful and you want to stick around, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video to let me know you want me to create more content like this.